Uh, it should be a VFR flight from Byron to Half Moon Bay. Um, let's immediately jump into the weather. Because uh, uh, this is kind of uh, our f uh, flight path, or at least like an approximation of it, um, as, as I'm planning it. So we would join this, um, this uh, Golden Gate uh, pass here and then fly over the bridge and then along the coast. Uh, we will see on the charts that um, how, how to fly that. Uh, the only significant thing I want to mention here is the gale uh, warning here. Uh, basically, these are very high winds. Should not affect us. Should be only um, you know uh, above the water, and but really uh, something maybe to keep an eye on. Um, not that we can do much about it. We are caught. Uh, what I see now is that we have some lower visibility at this point here. So let's check the meter. The last meter I checked. Uh, for the destination, we still have a 10 plus miles, so maybe that is something that is going to irritate a little bit. And before it loads, try something else. We can have winds. Right. So as predicted, the winds are from the uh, from the north. A uh, little, a uh, little uh, lighter than I thought. At more like 15, the uh, 15 knots uh, velocities up there in the morning. Now it's mainly between 10 and 15, uh, 10 and 15 at surface. It's so altogether different direction. And here you can see why there is a gale warning. Basically, strong wind with strong gusts. Uh, sh um, closer to the shore. It seems to be a little bit better, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, if I check the clouds and prediction for let's say 19 Zulu, you can already see that there might be some clouds there, very low, so 300 feet, but they should not reach, you know, over to the to the mainland yet. Maybe later today. I don't know why this is not working. Working. Actually, yeah, you can see that now we have four statute miles and haze at our destination. So this is already something that is basically not, um, not legal to fly, if I remember correctly. I believe five statute miles is actually the limit. Let me quickly, um, quickly check that. I fly like uh, in the simulator in the US and someplace else. In... That's actually three statute miles of visibility is the limit. I will tell you what, three statute miles of visibility is very bad, right? So already, so it is still legal to fly there. I would not in real life or I would have a backup plan uh, as always and would try to stay um, maybe, you know, uh, Maybe you know have a plan to come back or maybe land at some uh, airport with instrument approach. I don't even know if this one has an instrument approach. If uh, yeah, okay, it has an instrument approach, so there is something to fall back to if if um, the weather gets worse a lot. And we simulator pilots are all um, IFR certified, luckily. Or you can play it. You so that's fine. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't think there is anything um, anything uh, worse. Um, I think I wanted to check this and ceiling. Yeah, it's still valid. You can see that a little bit to the south, not far away. We actually have a prediction of uh, adverse weather. Uh, so this is flight category, you know, it's uh, IFR and limited IFR maybe, I don't know what that stands for. And here it is marginal VFR, so really, really not that great. Maybe some of it is already reaching, you know, north here. So we'll see how that goes. Flight planning. Is it the next one? 
now first destination so destination half moon bay if i look at the uh, remarks or we have two runways one two and three zero uh three zero runway has a right traffic which is kind of understandable because uh, you have kind of mountains here uh to the east uh, to the northeast so all the traffic patterns are uh, here uh, in the sea or over the sea one remark is that we should avoid flying directly over the Pillar Point Air Force Station and Pillar Point Air Force Station is actually here. There is a very small peninsula and when we will review these satellite images then um, you will see what I'm talking about. And uh, the, the thing why it's mentioned here is that normally if someone flies very tight patterns they might come uh, you know, over ahead of that overfly that so uh, let's uh, try to avoid that now route planning and today as you can see uh, this is the fly chart i believe that um, you are uh, familiar with that we will use that one and also the uh, terminal area chart in the terminal area chart you are better able to see the uh, geographic contours or uh, features and on the fly chart uh, the airspaces are much more visible and clear and also here are here is one flyway so what we can see here on the fly chart is first these maroon um, arrows are vfr transition routes and these uh, light blue the um, cyan color probably these are flyways now some flyways will uh, be designed in a way that they will take you away from the Bravo airspace. Some are um, though designed that they will take you through Bravo airspace anyway. In this case, this northerly one, uh, you can see that it keeps us below the Bravo airspace. So for here, you can see that you should fly below 5000 and you can see that the Floor of the airspace is 5000, here it's below 4000 and 4000 and so on and so forth. Here around the Lake Merced or Merced, uh, you have basically two options. You either avoid this little outcropping of the class Bravo that is actually to 1600 or you fly um, uh, straight through but you need to stay below 1600. Um, so it's really up to you. I will try to avoid that if possible. So this route uh, keeps us away from the class Bravo. So theoretically, uh, you might not need to be on the radio if we have an ADC. For all practical purposes, it's definitely better to be on the radio. Because this area here will be quite busy. Uh, normally in, in the real world so only maybe um, someone with the death wish would um, actually fly without the radio here uh, as an extra thing here you can see this circle that is 30 nautical miles uh, around the san francisco international and that is the area where you must be equipped with the mode charlie transponder and adsb out equipment uh, otherwise you cannot even um, enter here and um, I believe but uh, don't take my word for it completely that maybe in this circle you also need to be kind of on radio anyway even if you are uh, keeping or you need to have like an operation radio but I'm not 100% uh, certain about that one so sorry for uh, apart from the class Bravo, you can see that there is also an airport which is Oakland and uh, it is a class Charlie airspace. Uh, there is something that you don't see many, uh, many time, but uh, sometimes it happens and that is the altitude designation in the class Charlie, where the floor is specified as a 1500 feet and the ceiling is specified as T and that means that uh, it goes all the way to the floor of the class Bravo. Right, so you cannot have Bravo and Charlie at the same place at the same time. So uh, Bravo always takes precedence, but here it's even specified that, for example, the surface area of the class Charlie is going to the 
floor of the class Bravo. So in this place, it's going uh, all the way up to 4,000 feet, whereas in this place, it's going only to 2,100 feet. So it's kind of um, it fills it fills the gaps uh, for a class Bravo. Anyway, we should fly away, uh, around that one, so that should not be a factor for us. Uh, just, uh, just make sure that you don't uh, uh, punch it. Same. Now, as you can see, this is quite complicated, and yeah, there are some uh, some uh, things that can help you. For example, all those GPS points, for example, uh, VPBCK or VPSLM. Uh, uh, those are also available in your GPSs, so it should be there. So that's one option. Another option, whenever I need to basically skirt the class Bravo very, uh, very um, closely, I will always uh, facilitate or I will always take advantage of the satellite imagery and I will actually look beforehand how it looks like. Uh, so for that one, I'll actually switch to tag. And let's see, let's try to find our um, route here on the uh, kind of a satellite view. We have a Byron Airport here. And um, if I check uh, what our first first lag is, it should take us over this Los, uh, not Los, Los Vaqueros Reservoir. Is it that one or that one? Probably this big one. So Los Vaqueros Reservoir and should take us there all the way to Danville. Right. So if I look at the satellite imagery, I can immediately see the reservoir here. And the city of or town of Danville is actually there. So I know that when I fly over that reservoir, there is some mountain range. And then the Danville city will, if, if you basically keep to the south of this range, there is also Mount Diablo. Diablo, it should be quite uh, visible. Then the Danville will be on, at the foothills, you know, of um, of uh, it's another mountain range. So that is how you recognize Danville, right? Then, uh, flying further, we go all the way to Golden Gate Fields, and on the way we are passing St. Mary's. St. Mary's is actually some high school or something, and it's located right there, the College of California. Uh, it's made as a v, uh, VFR like uh, reporting point, so, so probably it's quite visible from the air and distinctive, so pilots are able to identify it. So from Danville, we continue like to the north of this one and all the way here. This is the Golden Gate Fields. Right? It's over there. It's a it's a blob of green you know, on the shore among all the buildings and, and other stuff. So again, something that should be quite visible. Next one is a Golden Gate Bridge itself and uh, forward, you know, a little bit forward, but Golden Gate Bridge is kind of in a way. So being there, this should be quite visible. We have um, uh, Alcatraz right there as well. We have Treasure Island here. So it should not be uh, difficult to really navigate uh, Golden Gate. And then we fly forward all the way to the um, outside the ocean and we hug, hug the coast, right? When hugging the coast, there becomes a time where we need to kind of uh, break away from the coast if, uh, if you don't want to descend uh, below 1600. Break away from the coast momentarily and then come back. Um, if I check the fly chart, basically we are able to uh, at this point, kind of go back and continue along the coast. It's not uh, depicted here by my lines, but uh, let's let's pretend that we want to do that. So fly there and just uh, head back. And if you study the features, then you see that the time to break away is actually next to Lake Merced. So uh, that's basically there. It's very close. It will be really in in a quite quick success, uh, succession. So you across the Golden Great Bridge, you turn left and almost immediately you come at the Lake Merced Park, at which point it's time to kind of uh, break away from the coast, fly a little bit, and when you see this peninsula, or basically this area on your left wing, it's time to kind of come back, 
uh, to the coast and then continue forward right so uh, take advantage of this you know especially in very hard airspaces or very hard to navigate airspaces make sure that uh, you are able to follow you know the path that you that you planned uh, one way as i say uh, the flyway is normally ident uh, defined as kind of a path or route where uh, GA pilots should uh, expect the most comfortable ride, or not most comfortable, but maybe not that crowded, right? At the uh, at the other hand, if you present it like this, and many GA pilots actually decide to use it, it becomes crowded. But what it will do is it will keep you uh, away from the IFR traffic mostly. And it's especially important, for example, in this portion, when uh, you can see there is like an arrival path and departure path um, to San Francisco International. They are, um, if they are landing east or departing west. And um, even keeping below 2,000 feet, I believe that you can give uh, quite a lot of like airline pilots a scare if they are landing and they see, you know, those. Uh, unidentified aircraft flying and they basically and rightfully so don't know what to expect of those guys most of the time because uh, there are a lot of cowboys flying in the US and a lot of great pilots as well but um, yeah so that's one a reason why it's also very good to be on the radio if possible any questions to the route itself yeah Thomas I have I have one. First of all, excellent briefing, Thomas. I've never seen the satellite view that you just showed today. That is so good. I've always tried to use just the sky vector, but uh, fantastic. I'll use that in the future. Um, my question is, all the blue lines, the VFR flyways, so you kind of um, added the satellite view and you added the VFR signage. If you had none of that, is there some kind of a navigation that lets you go follow the blue line just by instruments? No. Somehow, I don't think so. No, you basically these are VFR routes. So, uh, main uh, main kind of uh, way how you navigate VFR is by looking out the window and identifying the landmarks. And, so, okay, there, there is you. something that can help you. For example, those points here. If if they have a code like this or like that, yeah. that means that they are also in the navigation database, and you can actually put them into the GPS. Another okay. thing might be if you have like a working radio, uh, I don't think that it's this case because as you can see, these portions of the Bravo are basically defined by those points, right? You can see that, you know, there is the EPBDI right. and so on. Some of the class Bravo airspaces have actually like a defined um, areas by um, VOR, you know, radials and distances. That is also something that you could use. But in this case, I believe it's basically just uh, GPS defined. And, um, okay, thank you for that. So what is the difference between the blue ones, which is horizontal and the vertical arrows that you showed, which is on the, what's the, this one? Yeah, what is, yeah this yeah. one, what is that? So this is a VFR transition route. And as you can see, ATC clearance is required, right? So basically what you would do in this case is that, uh, if flying that one and when we will be coming back, uh, you know from the south We will also cross this area once more and we will use one of those uh, VFR transition routes definitely uh, but They require ATC clearance because generally they will not keep you completely out of those airspaces and uh, that's kind of uh, to help ATC uh, kind of uh, tell uh, them your intentions and what they can expect of you uh, in a very condensed way. As you know, these areas might be quite radio congested. So if you are a pilot coming from the north and you say, you know, you are um, probably talking to Sol uh, SoCal approach or something like that, and you tell them that uh, you are like a Cessna 152 at 5,000 feet, you know, uh, one zero miles north of Marin Academy, and uh, you want to use the coastline VFR transition route southbound. And that's all that you need to tell them, right? You want to use this VFR transition route. 
and they know that your plan is actually will be to use this route and they don't need to tell you okay now fly heading this and that you know and, and so on and so on so by uh, telling them this you are able to kind of uh, say your intentions in a very condensed way and they can also clear you very quickly and then only uh, thing you need to do is actually maintain that route okay thank you thank you thomas whereas those flyways uh, for example, this one is Northwestern Bay Flyway, and uh, as you can see, altitude is ATC assigned, so by definition you need to speak to the ATC to get the altitude here. Uh, so this is kind of an exception. Um, I would say that it's the first time I actually see that the flyway gets a name and that you need to have uh, altitude assigned by ATC. Normally, flywheels, flyways would keep you away from those airspaces, but uh, here it's something different. Um, again, I'm not flying there in real life, so I don't have you know, real life experience, so um, I can only guess how it really happens. There. All right. Uh, Thomas, can I ask you one other question? Sure. <laughs> what is the difference between these, these nice solid blue lines? which are in the square area versus the, the thicker VFR flyways that you just mentioned. You mean these blue lines? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This this one and the, the This the is bigger... just the airspace boundary. Oh, okay. So that's not a VFR. No, 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 okay. no, no. That's okay. just the airspace boundary. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. One more thing. Marine Sanctuary, actually. Uh, good that I uh, write that up there. If I look there... You can see this uh, solid line and a dotted line next to it. So inside of that is a, a National Marine Sanctuary, right? And if you can see uh, here, it basically starts already at the coast. And uh, general guideline is that you should not fly below 2000 feet above that one. Obviously, when you are going uh, to, to the pattern here and, and landing, you don't have any other option. But when there is this one, uh, it's uh, very akin to the you know national um, parks and the wild refugees area on inland. But this is just over the water. Pilots should refrain from flying too low over these areas. All right, departure. So uh, if I saw correctly, let's just verify that. Uh, we should have uh, winds from the north right now, uh, 19 gusting 16, so I believe that would make uh, the best runway, runway 3-0, yes, and runway 3-0 at Byron, bring up the data, has uh, the right traffic pattern, right, so the departure uh, I believe we are parking someplace there, so we would depart runway 30, probably straight ahead, or if we want it, we can like break off to the right when we are a hundred uh, thousand feet above the ground. If I look again at my map, yeah, uh, like a straight up departure makes most sense. And when you are 1500 above the field level, then it's time to actually turn left to the uh, reservoir and join the uh, join the lag there. So nothing really uh, complicated. Just uh, count with the fact that we will have some winds from the right. Uh, if I look at the magnetic variation, we are at a 13 degrees east, and uh, since east is least, that means that the wind is not coming from like 360, maybe like 350. So in that case, that would be coming like from there. This is like wind. Uh, we have nine knots casting, uh, casting 16, and it's coming right at like 45 degrees. So the crosswind component will be around seven knots gusting 10, gusting 12 maybe. So it might be on the limit for some people. So we just uh, take care of taking off. Um, and yeah, uh, the CTA frequency should be one to three point zero four. Yes, 1.3.05. Then en route, 
Um, yeah, basically, this is kind of a uh, char uh, slide that you can reference later. I'm not going. I'm not really changing that at all. They're changing the example a little bit. How to request the flight following if you want to. Um, so this is something you would say uh, if um, uh, if you wanted that. Otherwise, if you are on the frequency, pay attention. If ATC calls you, then uh, you basically need to to uh, reply. That's good of me, Cessna Comanche. I didn't even notice the typo there. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, keep track of your progress. Uh, another backup is to time those legs. So if you are not unsure if you reached your certain point or turning point, you can compare. You know if uh, if um, you do the uh, right amount of time there, and it, um, that can help you uh, with your situational awareness. Arrival. Again, let's take a, let's take a pen. If I saw correctly, the winds should be coming from the northwest. So that means runway three zero would be in use, and that one has a uh, that one has a left traffic pattern. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. I believe I said that it should be over the water, but let's just confirm. Three zero is actually right. Ah, so uh, ignore what I said, and actually have a right traffic pattern so it's actually keeping us out of the water and we should be flying over the mountains that's interesting all right yeah right and one two is left interesting uh so this is five thousand feet uh five thousand feet long runway and that's basically almost one statute or one nautical mile and one nautical mile is also some kind of recommend distance to keep on the downwind so that would place the downwind right about there um so yeah so just uh, exercise uh, caution you know don't hit the mountains basically and how to join that pattern since it's gonna be runway 30 the normal join procedure for that one would be actually to join here from 45 degrees Again, we are over the mountains, so uh, it might require some uh, creative thinking, or we will just join the downwind, you know, coming from there. Uh, because all those VFR departure and arrival procedures, those are recommendations that you should adhere to if you can. Obviously, sometimes terrain will stand in your way or some other operational reasons, so uh, always try to think with your hat and uh, make sure that you actually do what is uh, what is most sensible uh in any case whatever you do just clearly clearly communicate on the radio when doing that now uh, before coming there i believe that you should make your intentions uh like um broadcast at least 10 nautical miles out so let's say if you're flying that, so maybe when you are turning left here towards the coast again, it's already a time to make a call because you can see this is just nine nautical miles. At this point, you would be only eight miles north of the airport. Just make sure that you call call in and don't forget. And when you join the pattern, it's time to land. So Thomas, yes. What what reason could it be to have a right pattern here? I mean, logic would say that you should stay away from the mountains. Yeah. What is there anything that you see on the sky on the maps that tells you there's something else happening on the other side? Yes. So there are two reasons basically. One is that there is actually that maritime, you know, sanctuary, mar marine sanctuary right off the coast. So that's one thing. And the second thing is, as I said, there is this Pillar Point Air Force Base, and uh, that is uh, basically here. All right, so again, this is to keep you from overflying that one. Oh yeah, you did mention that. Thank you. Yeah. So, so this one and also the maritime stuff. Uh, probably, you know, uh, the maritime uh, kind of uh, life is more uh, important than uh, than you know the human life. Uh, so let let human crash into the mountains, basically. But those are not that high. As you can see, we have like 500 feet here written. Uh, and this will not be much, much, much more. And 
every time if for operational reasons just stay a little bit higher that's fine as well pattern so that's it I don't know if to wish you happy flying because I don't know if uh, MSFS will uh, will play or not alrighty so yesterday we had a yesterday we had a briefing uh, but you couldn't fly because uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator didn't work. So today, without the briefing, and we go flying. All the settings were reset um, somehow. So I hope that I got them back as they should be. Because otherwise I don't know what, the, what I'm going to do. It's pretty high temperature today. Like 35 Celsius. 36 actually uh, we have some haze at our destination and we hope that we'll be able to actually fly and complete it correctly so let's oh, try to guess the gangs all here now yeah so let's try to start the airplane verify I'm connected yes I'm connected um, so let's see how that goes I do hope I don't need the primer in this temperature. We'll see. See how that goes. So, clear prop. Some craft there. Maybe I will need that at least one stroke. Let's see. Three weeks since this bird was started last time. I have the positive uh, amp load, oil temp already in the green, yes. Oil pressure, fuel pressure is fine. So apparently, I struggle with the concept of having more than two digits behind a comma. I was tuned in to 123.005 and not 05. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we go VFR today. Enter. We configure it to two two point eight there, because that's our destination. Diamond traffic is not on the three six echo at type five five arrow on the ramp taxi into one bay three zero via alpha five. I will use map for taxiing. Hmm. For some reason, I had to set the weather back to live weather. <coughs> so Me too. Everything was reset. Uh, verify also like um, realism settings because I, I had it everything on easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I had to switch that back to, <laughs> back to hard. Yeah. yeah, but basically it reset the Xbox status. <laughs> Xbox user status, I call it. Ah. <laughs> that was nice of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Byron Traffic, Oscar Kilogol of Papa Charlie is a Piper Comanche on the ramp and uh, taxiing for runway uh, 30. Byron. And I hope you could hear me on the radio. Yep. Good, thanks.
Fire and traffic, 26529 Lima on the ramp, taxi into runway 30, Byron. Seems to me my paddles are kind of very sensitive, so let me just just quickly check uh, I don't think I s check this that looks more like it so let's use that one yeah now it looks much better okay so that's how it should be Yes, everything reset to the default, my god. So we have wind from the back, so we should be like doing like this here. My hand will be, will ache from this. Oh, two wind socks right next to each other. Interesting. So where do we go from here? Byron traffic, November 75600 is a Cessna Type 172, uh, taxiing to runway 30, Byron traffic. the right I go So full mixture. Two thousand RPM. Everything looks good. We have hundred drop, yes. Looks nice. Let's cycle that stale brown oil through the prop. Part driving number one in some big shelter. Runway three zero. Wire traffic. Wire traffic. Repeat. Working. Very good. Now three check. Two nine eight five. Barn traffic on three six echo lining up and departing on the three zero start of departure. Byron. We're gonna do a uh, no flap. But what did I do? Okay. Oh, that's. Nice. Uh, do no flap departure because of the high winds.
again. We have about 45. Yes, that's about right. Fuel pump on. He thought he definitely not did it. Landing lights on. Uh, oh, doesn't work. All of my buttons do not work. Well, no time to actually uh, set that up. Oh, it seems like. Oh my God. Oh my... Why is it not activated? Well, no time to do that now, but I just wanted my... Uh, flight timers are not there. Okay, so I'll just go away from the queue. So I don't uh, block others. Island traffic, uh, 36 Echo, upwind runway 30, 1,100, climbing 3,500, climbing right turn back to the field. Byron. Alright, so I was able to fix this, finally. Fix the license, and it's time to go. Running on the left tank, that's good. So let's go for it. Right. So just to verify, after takeoff, we're going to head for the lake, then continue to Danville on a heading of uh, basically. 260 or something like that. So we have run the 30 uh, right here. Yes. Byron traffic, Oscar Kilo Golf Papa Charlie, Piper Comanche, runway 30, uh, lining up and taking off runway 30, Byron. And this is not runway 30, there is runway 30. obviously wrong okay full mixture everything is on so well, let's go Let's ease up on the engine a little bit. Timer has been started. first initially climbing straight out. It's quite uh, hot, so I'm gonna just push forward and increase the speed a bit to get the better cooling. Landing lights can go off. Fuel pump as well.
Right. Iron traffic was calculable of Papa Charlie about five miles uh, west of the airfield at 2,300 feet, leaving the area to the west. Final call, Byron. Let's go to Unicom, and here we have the reservoir. That's good. We should be skirting the north side of it. Oh. So make a turn. Still have full mixture because we are under 3,000 feet. Plus, it's quite hot, so the extra cooling provided by the uh, by the fuel is welcome. If that's enough of an altitude now. Windy there. So it should take us about seven and a half minutes straight flight, so maybe eight to nine minutes to get to Danville. Should be someplace there. can see that haze that's around there so we'll see I will manage Consulting the map, it's probably Dublin there on the left. Or actually, uh, it's going to be an airport around. Yeah, but this will be Danville there. This should be.
I to I want to go a little bit lower because um, let's say that I want to stay 3,000 feet above the surface. Let's go lower. Then we'll then we will fly to Golden Gate Fields on the heading of 273. Already set it up here. Basically doing 273 already. We'll be coming here. But that's from Danville. So let's continue to Danville first. Maybe that will be Danville or not. No, no, this one will be Danville. There's also uh, Mount Diablo, which should be that one. As you can see, Mount Diablo, yeah. And this is the anvil there, so we are good and we'll climb again. Climbing again, so I'll just reduce the throttle a bit. To get back down. Let's say that we have reached it at uh, 8 minutes and a half. I'll just make a note. 8.5, which is good. Another six and a half minutes should take us to Golden Gate Fields. Along the way, uh, we will be passing um, here St. Mary's about, let's say, uh, in two minutes or three minutes. That's behind these, uh, this mountain range and it should be a kind of a college. We'll see about that. Since we are going over the mountains, let's uh, stop descending. Let's go back to flying level. Already see San Francisco Bay up there, or that one maybe. I don't know exactly which one is uh, San Francisco Bay, but it doesn't matter that much right now. Maybe it's on the map. Yeah, this is San Francisco. Um, probably Bay. Be. Any case. more in left tank because we are using right okay so let's start using left there basically some place there will be St. Mary's Uh, we have this it lake, no, it's its reservoir and St. Mary's in that case should be someplace there maybe there yeah, but we can see the reservoir at least or maybe we're just uh, under it because if I'm not mistaken, I should be heading someplace there. Yeah. Should be heading there, so. It, of course. Updated weather. One six zero at eight, so one five zero at eight. Four statue miles haze. Mm -hmm. Two nine or nine or one. So I already changed the altimeter settings to two nine or nine or one. Now 
let's see what San Francisco International has. Oh, San Francisco International still has 2985. Okay. So hopefully I will not forget to change it later. Last station calling, you are totally unreadable. And let's check the uh, altitudes that I need to maintain. So there below 4000, and here it's going to be 3000. San Francisco traffic, the United 1969, uh, heavy we are on a 10 mile, uh, 10 miles down for the island, 28 uh, left. This will be Golden Gate Fields. Strongly. Yeah, we don't want to shoot the establish six miles of speed, right? I see the Golden Gate Bridge already. Golden Gate Fields there. Should have taken us six and a half minutes. It's uh, gonna be a little bit longer, but doesn't really matter. Descending. Right, I believe that it's gonna be, let's say, seven minutes. We're now gonna do two to six and still gonna descend. It is so cloudy near the Golden Gate. I can see the bridge just fine, but haze uh, behind it. Well, not really. I'm unable to see the bridge, but I think I should see it soon. Yeah, I'm over the Golden Gate fields right now, and I see the bridge perfectly. Okay. Some traffic, game the one line through the short power landing, uh, please, right? Some traffic, yeah, you're not in that, it's not heavy, we are on the other side, uh, you're in that, some traffic. I can't understand these guys. Neither can I. <laughs> and I believe they are speaking on the wrong frequency anyway. <laughs> Traffic 
onto a very liberal interpretation of the 45 degree entry. It's not More possible like. to the right. <laughs> if, uh, if you left traffic 1 2, it's possible, I guess. Just it's more like 15 degrees and not uh, more like 5 degrees <laughs> I'll probably do a straight in <laughs> yeah okay I can't do that but yeah you can I'll do it as well because that's not a lot of space the bridge is coming up it would be spectacular to be flying here in real life Falcatraz to my left right now. Yep. Just went under it. You went under Alcatraz? No, oh, under the bridge. <laughs> under yeah. the oh, you, okay. It's enough space if you wanna do it. <laughs> I got a pull up warning, but it's totally it, worth uh, it. <laughs> nice. About 10 miles to the north, we'll be inbound for a uh, full stop and half moon. Hey. So, the plan now is to actually overfly, and when we are along the coast, just head south, and when we are behind that lake, we need to break off a little bit. Are they speaking English? Yeah, I, it sounds I, like I doubt French. it. Yeah, exactly. So wrong frequency and in French. Time for a photo. Okay, time to turn. So we're gonna now go one six five. And maybe if I'm not completely bad. Someone does it, give the one of you to cross link to your left. That's a nice visibility. Okay, so it was four of the bridge looks very seven. beautiful. <laughs> Even from the sim. <laughs> Say four, six. Now it's just two minutes. There is this lake, and we will be breaking off towards the heading of one nine or four. So I'll actually set up one nine or four. Yeah, Tango Taxi via Bravo and Alpha via Niner into standard Golf 5 for San Francisco traffic. That doesn't really look great. So, altimeter. 2991, was it? Yeah.
I'm going slower than I planned, but at least I can enjoy the views. So, let's reset that, break off. It's gonna be scary flying into the haze. Then we should basically come back when we on our left wing if we are able to see, obviously yeah, like <laughs> hard to say probably that one we can go back and it should be about just one minute or something, maybe two minutes for me. Bigger one. Yeah, it's probably that one I should add there. Okay, I believe it's time. Let's turn there. Half Moon Bay traffic, Oscar Kilo, Golf Papa Charlie, Piper Comanche, about 8 miles north of the field at 1500 feet. We'll be making first trade in for runway 1 2, full stop landing, Half Moon Bay. So I'll just Reset. Half Moon Bay traffic command two six five two nine Lima is left downwind one two Half Moon Bay. Oh, oh, fuck! <laughs> Sorry. Alright, so um, basically, it should be probably there. Half Moon Bay traffic, Lima 1 is on Victor Delta, Type Diamond, uh, about 5 miles north from uh, the field, straight on approach, uh, runway 1 2. Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay, Comanche 29 Lima, left base 1 2, Half Moon Bay. Let's drop the gear.
if that should be that should be the runway probably let's do laps half my traffic November when I can look out the journey final runway one two half me Half Moon Bay traffic, Oscar Kilo Gulf of Charlie, about three miles final runway one two. Don't have any traffic on final in sight yet. Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay traffic, November one is Helvet Delta going round. Half Moon Bay traffic, November 75600, is a type, is a Cessna type 172, about 10 miles to the north, joining the left downwind for runway 12, Half Moon Bay traffic. Half of my traffic, now I'm going to send Victor Delta downwind from way 1 2. Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay traffic, Oscar Q, Glove Papa Charlie, runway 1 2, vacated taxi into parking, Half Moon Bay. Okay, so for that, I will actually select this Half map. Half Moon traffic, November 1 8. Seven Victor Delta right. turning and base. Runway yeah. one two half on base. So lights off. Yeah, turn off the master switch. Okay, interesting. so much a fog, I can hardly see anything in front. Did you also face the same, Tomas, others? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's... Oh, it, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that's all right. It, it's, it took some peeking through the fog, but uh, I was able to see the wrong way. Okay. Okay. And mainly because I, I knew where to look for it. <laughs> I'm like four miles out, but it's so foggy, and I'm down to 700, and I can barely see it. Chance of Half Moon Bay is a pretty descriptive name. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it's a bit more difficult 
uh, approaching from the north. We can't. Where is it? No, let me check the map. Yeah, I guess you can see the half moon shape better when approaching from the south. to go around because I couldn't see I think Gene was on the runway so I went on the last moment mm. and really I foggy I couldn't see you at all and I was quite close uh, on the final I don't know why because of the fog I think I saw someone at some point and then just disappeared yeah I can see it I think Right, we are there. It was uh, very marginal VFR, I would say. Four statute miles is just one mile more than required. And as you could see, it was not fun to fly in. But over the San Francisco, it was pretty spectacular. So glad we got to see that one. I hope you enjoyed this after the th uh, three week long break uh, from flying uh, in the simulator for me. And I hope to see you next week. Bye.